Today, I'm gonna to tell you everything that I love and hate about this Audi Q3 S-Line. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I'm standing in front of this brand new Audi Q3 crossover vehicle. This is the S-Line model, so it should be pretty well trimmed. And I've had this for a few days here, borrowing it. So I thought I'd show you what I love and hate about it. Well, here it is. Maybe the perfect style and the perfect size for a crossover vehicle for most people. If I were to buy an Audi today, this is probably the one that would be on my short list because of its small size, supposed to be fuel efficient, supposed to have that Audi good looks and quality. We're going to see if I agree with all of that today. First of all, one of the things that I don't like about this is the design. So when the Audi Q3 originally came out, it really was actually pretty cute. I wouldn't say that it seemed overly manly, but over the years, Audi has decided to go to this more angular styling on everything. And it's basically like they took the original cars and then just went ahead and integrated more angular lines. So this grill here really sticks out. I don't like it. It just kind of looks like the grill is jumping out of the face of the car. It looks too big for this particular car. I actually wish it stopped right about here, maybe right at the bumper, so that it was just a little bit smaller. I definitely get why Audi likes those big mouth gaping grills and in many cars they look okay but if it weren't com coming out like this so much right right in here I think it's the same problem that the original Buicks had they had like this waterfall quote unquote waterfall grill and it made the grill look like it was leading the car and everything so I hate it I don't like it well the rest of it the sharp lines and stuff I don't think are totally bad these wheel arches I don't think are totally bad it's just that this seems so forced onto a platform that it wasn't meant for you know I'm gonna mention it a couple times now but Lamborghini is a sister company to Audi and Lamborghini has been making this kind of angular line design work for them and I feel like Audi has decided to take that language and apply it to their cars as close as they can get a little bit of that Lamborghini attractiveness and it's not really working in my opinion it doesn't make the car look Look ugly per se but when I look at other crossovers from Mercedes and Jaguar and Porsche and they have more organic lines there's nothing about this that puts it in those same categories those other cars are definitely on the side of beautiful whereas this one is definitely in the territory of it kind of irks me now one of the things that I really hate about this is the key fob so I'm gonna pull that out right here so this is the key fob itself it is like this little switchblade key and I will tell you what even though this is a keyless entry here so there is a wireless chip somewhere inside of this key fob this is the oldest key fob I've ever seen for a modern car in fact my 2006 audi a4 has exactly the same key fob as far as i can tell i mean same plastic same shape and everything and so for 15 years audi has been using this without changing it so that kind of blows my mind in some ways and you can see here the other thing that i hate is because they are using this old key fob there is no remote start on here so a lot of gms will come with remote start but this one does not have it on here so if you park your car outside or if you're at work and you want to start that air conditioner before you get in it you can't do with this now you might be able to do it with some sort of audi app but it's certainly not going to be done from the key fob now the thing i do like about this is their keyless entry system so if i come up to the car like this normally this would be a button on the handle and that will lock it but if i want to unlock it all i have to do is put my hand here on the handle and you might have heard it it went ahead and unlocked so i can just open up the car on my buick well this is lock i have to come up grab the handle and then hit the button before i pull on the door handle so i love the fact that this works just like that as opposed to me having to do another action with my thumb so it's just a little bit of laziness but it's a nice little convenience that they integrate into their car that a lot don't all right i'm gonna swing around the car here like i said it just kind of irks me a little bit the way they design this but it's not really ugly by any means it's a decent looking car it's got decent proportions but actually i will say that i think the rear view of this car is the best it kind of leans forward a little bit kind of has that sport back look it's a little weird because i don't know that the rear view of any car is my favorite view but on this particular car it probably is now despite what i said they're not really liking the style i actually do like the fact that they have used this brushed or satin chrome material around the car even on the roof rails there which is really nice but around the windows and such it's really nice because it doesn't show water spots or fingerprints or dirt as much as the sand chrome does it reduces the shine just a little bit kind of gives you more of the sporty look here even the badge here that says s line is also in that satin finish again i showed it up here on the grill so i really actually like that i wish more companies would have the fortitude to go ahead and dispense with the chrome i think it's one of those things that a lot of companies have 
I just figured that, oh, it makes a car look luxurious. And so if you can get rid of that, I think that adds some sportiness. Now I will say too, I don't like these wheels. They are not that attractive. They are probably just a little bit undersized at 18 inches while they are fairly normal. I think a 19 inch wheel would fill this out, would still give you plenty of sidewall here to give you a really comfortable ride on this particular car. It really kind of makes the tire look like it's too big for the car. So to me, I don't like these wheels. All right, so let's jump in this little bad boy. And let me tell you what I love and hate about the interior. I will say that I definitely kind of like the Lamborghini styling inside. So as I mentioned, Lamborghini kind of has this angular look. You can kind of see that here in the vents. You can see it around the dash. I will say that Audi, Porsche, Lamborghini are all in the same family. So there is quite a bit of similarity across the board, especially in the Porsches and Volkswagens and the center console. This is kind of their thing, a big touch screen. Uh, the new Porsche Cayenne was the first one that I can think of that was very similar to this. And while it works here and is actually pretty cool, and especially in the instrument cluster there, it kind of looks very Lamborghini-ish. I don't know that it looks to me great. It looks fine and it's kind of a cool design language. But I don't get in and I'm like, this is awesome. It just looks different, if that makes sense, right? Even the door handles here, those remind me of door handles from the Gallardo. The door handles here, which I'm actually not a big fan of, are, I think, more design than function. Now, I do get that I can reach up here like this and grab the door handle, or I can reach up like this. But I actually think that this stripe here should have been lower because my hand kind of naturally wants to go in and grab the door handle from up top here. And the only way to do that is to kind of turn my hand like this, or I've been generally reaching up like this to pull on this door handle. So I, again, I think it looks kind of cool. It looks kind of different, but there's a reason that most door handles aren't different. All right. The other thing is when you get in this car, the engine start stop button is down here. So obviously keyless, you're going to need that button. I will say it's a little bit far away and maybe that's so that you don't have an inadvertent press of the button, but I don't like it down there. So many cars are up here. They have obviously plenty of space, so I'm not sure why it's down there. It's obviously easier to see, so I don't have to hunt behind the steering wheel for it. It's okay, but pretty much every other car has had the button up here for start stop. So I don't know why it's down there. Now, this is going to be kind of stupid, but I actually love this rear view mirror. So what you can see here is it's glass, pretty much it's edge to edge here. So it just has kind of a nice look to it. It doesn't have like the big plastic bezel on it that so many mirrors have. And so it's a small thing, but I don't know, it just kind of makes me feel more important to have the small details like on this rear view mirror taken care of as well. Now, one of the things that I hate is the center console here with this big panoramic roof. As you know, I don't really like sunroofs or panoramic roofs. I think they are trying to give people a little bit of the convertible feel in a car that is nothing like a convertible. But what I would rather have is that money spent on a universal garage door opener. So I don't care if you live in your own home, maybe you live in a high rise. A lot of people have garage door openers to get into their parking garages, but I don't see any buttons for any of that up here. So that's a big miss because it's one of those small things. Sometimes they will have the home link right here on a visor but none of that is there and so I think that is a big miss. Now let's go down here to the instrument cluster. This to me is the most Lamborghini like thing. Now I will say I haven't been driving any Lamborghinis lately but all digital instrument clusters aren't new. They have been around for a while. I think this one actually fits this car pretty well. They've done a nice job of abandoning the skeuomorphic graphics and just having some nice flat graphics. Now there's a couple things about this. First of all the instrument cluster seems to be tilted down a little bit so so my head is up here and I am definitely looking down on that instrument cluster. My guess is maybe they tilt it down to minimize reflection on it. I'm just not sure, but it's one of those things that you get used to. But when you first get in it, you're like, why is it tilted down? It's just kind of a little bit strange. Now, the other thing we'll talk about this on the road is that I think the way they have done these needles on the instrument gauges, the needles are very thin, very small. And the way they are basically showing you how fast you are going or how fast you are revving is the little lighter shaded areas. So if I go ahead and hit the gas here just a little bit, you can see that the light gray area lightens up. Now, it's not that hard to see, but this digital instrument cluster is actually one of the harder ones to read because of that. I don't think you are normally looking for color changes, and these are pretty 
mild color changes and if they had made either maybe the needles bigger the digital needles bigger or maybe made the colors contrast a little bit more maybe a white on a black background instead of a gray on a dark gray background something like that it would probably be a little easier to see i don't know that a lot of people need to look down and see what their car is doing a lot but especially on the speedo that's why i think they have that digital speedo right in the middle of the other speedos because you're going to be using that for the most part now, if I zoom out here just a little bit, I'm gonna show you the steering wheel because this is actually probably my favorite part of this car. It's actually a pretty big differentiator from a lot of other cars. Audi has done steering wheels pretty nice for a while. I will say that it's one of these things that is very easy to design very flat. A lot of people care what the design is when you're looking at the steering wheel, but Audi has always done this where the steering wheel has had a lot of three dimension to it. This little cover for the airbag here is very deep. It makes the steering wheel feel very deep the cover here actually looks pretty small because it kind of comes to a point here and so it doesn't telegraph is very big you remember those early airbag steering wheels that were very very large and so the steering wheel controls here are really nicely placed the wheel kind of tilts forward it's very thick here it feels nice in the hand you have a nice big open spoke here on the bottom in case you drive from the bottom here so anywhere you turn this you can get good purchase on it you can grab it you don't have to worry about some big spoke blocking your hand here there are paddles on the steering wheel too i have never used those it always seems a little funny to me to have paddles on the steering wheel of a crossover but you know they did that but otherwise i think they did a great job here not only with the materials but i love that brush finish here just makes everything look really high quality on this and this is something you're going to see feel and touch pretty much every time you're in the car if you're a responsible driver so this is just something that's nice to look at i really wish more car companies would do better jobs on their steering wheels I will say here that one of the things that I like are really good steering wheel controls. So if I go ahead and raise the volume here, you can see that it raises the volume there and then I can advance or go back on tracks right here. Now, the thing I don't like about this is that when I was actually playing music in this car, I was like, dude, how do I play or pause the music from here? How does my passenger play or pause it? I am so used to having advance, rewind, play, pause right there, those types of things, but there is none of that. And if you touch on the screen here, nothing comes up. If I hit list, that's just going to take me back to the rest of the songs. And so what I realized is that down below here, do, 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 we have this lone volume knob and it has the advanced controls there and the power button for the radio. It just seems really weird that you have that button down there. I get it, maybe they couldn't put it up here, but you also have this panel here. I think there are some warning lights and stuff behind there, but it certainly would have made more sense to me to have that button right up here, maybe up here, or at least software controls on the screen so that your guest wants it to talk to you and they can just hit pause or turn the volume down or whatever, or they love a song and they can just go back. I don't think it's intuitive that you would look down here for the controls. Control. Now, that being said, I will say that this touch screen is pretty awesome. So it moves so fluidly. This is probably the most tablet-like touch screen I have ever used in a car. And so it's nice and smooth. And like I said, it, the response is pretty real time on it, which is pretty awesome. So if we just go down here, one of the other things that I love is that we have this little cubby hole here that's not necessarily unique. It's something that exists in my Buick Encore too, but what they've done here is they've made this cubby hole long and flat. So the beautiful thing about this is while it does not have a wireless charging pad in it, I can actually put my phone down here, even my 11 Pro Max, it's an oversized phone with a case, go in there with room to spare, this little rubber bottom here, make sure that it doesn't slip around. But what I could do is get a wireless charging pad, put it in there, and then plug it into these two USB ports. So I really love the fact that there are two USB ports that type A and a C right there. So I could have multiple people charging. I could have my guest in the passenger seat charging their phone. I could plug in a wireless charging pad to either one of these. So I love that it's wireless charging pad ready. Now I wouldn't have minded if they had put one in there to begin with, but I know they didn't. And over here, and I do want to show you that this has a little knee cubby right there. It has this like soft fabric velvet lining on it. So again, I like these. I know that they aren't usually the biggest thing. It's really not usually big enough for a pair of glasses or 
a cell phone or something like that. But I love the fact that if you have a parking card, or an ID, a toll card, something like that, that only the driver really needs to have access to and you don't want to fumble through the glove box to find stuff, maybe your insurance card or whatever, you can put those in here and this is really easy to access. This is actually one of the nicer boxes I've used. In fact, it's not just a friction box. There is actually a little switch up in this handle. So you push the switch up and then it releases here. So a lot of these you just kind of pull and this one has a switch with these little levers there. So probably one of the nicer little knee cubbies that I've ever used. Let's get into a couple more things that I love here. So on the door panel here, you see we have this angular shape that goes on the door sill. And what I love about this, it's one of those stupid things, but this is only maybe two inches wide, but it's wide enough that I can put my arm up here and kind of ride in style with my arm up here on the arm rest because I actually like doing that it's kind of nice it kind of airs my arm out it kind of stretches me out a little bit and a lot of sills up here especially around the windows aren't large enough to accommodate my arm so I love the fact that they do that now I will say that the drawback to that is that this armrest down here while it's nice I think it looks good is too low I don't understand this so I don't know why this is so low I don't have the seat up very high actually when I got into this car the seat was even higher so maybe they just want to make sure that it's low enough for people with long arms so they don't feel claustrophobic like it's too high but for whatever reason it's it's way too low for me in fact if i rest my arm on this my elbow is not touching because it's being suspended from my body like that i will also say flip around to this side i like the fact that there is a center console armrest right here so you, you don't have something like in my encore where only the driver has an armrest you have an armrest here it's not huge but at least the passenger and the driver can both use it but again this is too low so it's just really really low now I'm five foot eight. I have the seat about where I would want it. And I will also say that while this slides up and down here, it will cover the second cup holder though. The armrest here slopes down a little bit too. So it kind of has this wing like curve to it and it's just it's just too low again i can kind of hit it with my forearm but my elbow is floating above it so that's a little weird now i will say one of the things that i love are these headrests and i don't know why every car doesn't have adjustable headrests like this so obviously they go up and down now that isn't usually a big surprise but what they do have are these little buttons right here and this allows you to move the headrest forward and back and the whole thing will kind of collapse in a couple pieces when you do that now I love it because to me most headrests don't have this kind of adjustability and they are too far forward. You can see how far forward that is. That is going to really press your head forward. If your head leans forward and you need this headrest up there to prevent whiplash in case you get rear-ended or something, then this is going to accommodate a lot of people. But for most people that sit very upright, they want this all the way back. And that's what I have done here. And that is perfect. It still kind of rides the back of my head just a little bit, but I have been in so many cars where you can't adjust this to meet regulations or something. They just put it in the farthest forward position here so that they don't have to put in an adjustable headrest. And it's really uncomfortable for a lot of people, but that is brilliant. I love it. It makes this car comfortable. I wish someone would manufacture these for all models. So if you have a car with a headrest that is uncomfortable, you could order it and replace it with these. These are really, really nice. Even though I have said that the interior is okay, one of the things they have done here is put a lot of black plastic. Now, generally, I have liked the piano black plastic on stuff, but around here on the vents and whatnot, I get that it's black because they don't want to put bright work around it, maybe reflect the sunlight into your eyes. But to me, and look at it, doesn't it just look like cheap black plastic? I mean, it is. I don't think anyone thinks that that's metal painted with a black finish. It just looks like cheap black plastic. And while it doesn't scream totally ugly, it just doesn't scream premium either to me. So I don't really like that. The other thing I want to say here is that these little switches, all the switch works, the lock unlock, the window controls, the mirror controls here have been in Audis as far as I can remember. This looks a lot like my 2006 A4. This is exactly what is in my 2015 A3. So they have gotten a lot of life out of these switches. They're not necessarily bad. They have a nice finish. They seem to last a long time. They have these little metal tips on the end, just the tip. And so I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you'll see this stuff in Audis going back darn near 15 years in my opinion. The other thing is more of like a stylistic thing and I'm not a designer by any means, but we have large swaths of unused area here. Even down here underneath the panel here, 
I don't know if maybe on a higher trim they put more controls here, but we have the kind of this big blank panel there. We obviously do have a blank switch right there. But over here too, we also have blank switches. So, you know, again, headlights are here, but maybe there's a fog light button or something like that. Maybe they put in lane departure defeat or something up here, but I don't understand why we have these big flat panels. We also have dead switches. It seems like we have kind of a lot of wasted space. It seems to me like a designer wanted to update everything, but they didn't really have to go ahead and integrate the switches. And so it just seems a little disconnected as opposed to someone who is trying to balance the design and the switches required together. The other weird thing to me is that we have this 12 volt outlet right here right next to the driver's seat, right next to the cup holders. So we do have USB ports up there, but it seems a little weird to have this little 12 volt opening right here. seems like you usually hide those away, but it is what it is. All right, let's get in the rear of the car where I am gonna show you what I love and hate it. Usually in the rear of cars, there isn't a lot to show you, but there is in this car. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump in here first. And one of the things that I actually really like, and I've already gone ahead and adjusted these seats because they do kind of recline. And what you can probably see here is that this seat is as far back as it will go, and this seat is moved up. You can kind of see the difference right there. And so what's funny is that there is a little bit of travel. Now, I actually really like that when car companies do that, this little pull strap down here. You can see here, the seat will obviously fold down, but it what it allows me to do is to stop it here, maybe in a more vertical position, or push it all the way back like this. Now, I will say when it is back like that, it is really reclined. And so they were pushed back all the way when I first got in here. And I will say that I was like, oh man, these are really laid back. In fact, I don't know that I want to ride like this for a really long time. But I tell you what, if I were going to take a nap or something, this is perfect. It's not really a fully reclined position, but it's certainly one of those situations where you're not sitting up vertically and then you're kind of falling over side to side so this would be really nice so the one big advantage of having this little loop down here to adjust this is now while sitting i can grab the loop here and then go ahead and lean forward and get this to a more vertical position which would probably be more comfortable for sitting up riding and talking with people so that's why i think they've done that little loop down there so that makes some sense to me so that's pretty cool a couple other quick things here like on the ceiling we do have reading lights right there i really like that down here in the center console we actually have the air vents which you might expect but then we also have a 12 volt adapter as well as two usb c ports so i really like that as well people can charge up their electronics we have a couple of mesh pockets right there. We have the same type of material right here with the same upside down door handle, in my opinion. We also have tons of little hooks. I don't know why these are here. These would be for hanging up clothes you pick up at the dry cleaning. We have a couple of hooks right here on both sides. And then right here in the center console, I'm kind of split about this. The center console is nice. I certainly like having an armrest here, but the cup holders are right here and they're very small. And so I wish, you know, on some of the original Audis, they put the cup holder up here. So it would slide out like that. While this means that the center armrest here is still gonna be pretty comfortable. When you open it up like that, it seems like it takes it up and it gives you such small cup holders that anything other than one of those small pop cans isn't gonna really fit in there. So so I don't know what that's about. Now, all right, I wanna spin up here because this is kind of all gonna fall under the category of these back seats are hard to get out of. First of all, I wanna show you here that this B pillar is quite wide. It may not be any wider than any other car, but it comes back pretty far. And what I wanna show you is that while this car is pretty comfortable to sit in, I've got plenty of space, plenty of tow room underneath the seat in front of me, you can see how far back this B pillar comes. So I'm gonna open up the door here, right? This B pillar, even though it has this little beveled edge here is probably six inches behind the seat where i have it for me at five foot eight so when you're going to get out you have to bring your foot back to clear not only obviously the seat there but this b pillar now i have size 10 feet and i want to show you that my size 10 feet are basically the distance between the b pillar and the seat right here so if you are bigger feet than that you are certainly gonna to have to turn them or go toe out or whatnot first now the other thing about this and this is something that i actually thought i might like is that there is this little pocket next to the seat here right and i was like oh that makes some sense here so they sacrificed a little bit of the seat cushion put this little pocket here i can put my book my ipad my phones those types of things down here but what that does is it means now the seat here is actually further from the door so now we have maybe another three inches of where there would be seat cushion and this is now turned into a pocket and what ends up happening is i don't have as much seat cushion to ride out to get out of the car so it's a little tight where i get my foot out but now i'm actually further back 
even though I want to step out of the car than I normally would be by about three inches, which makes this door sill here feel like it is really big. And so getting out of this is actually not that easy. And now if I were a kid, and I'm assuming that this is supposed to be family friendly, if I were a kid, very small, you're kind of sliding out of the seat. If you're someone who's not very limber, I think that's also going to be a problem. I actually thought that this was a great idea, but now I would rather give this up and have the seats come all the way out to give you maybe more space in here, but then also make it easier to egress out of the car as well. All right, let's swing around here to the back, into the back cargo area here, because this is actually something that I like. I like that look back here. I like the fact that they have the spoiler integrated up here. It gives it a little bit more of a beefier look. And if I just hit this button here, we are going to open up this gate and it does have this cargo cover here, which is kind of nice. It's a little privacy cover. It's got these little tabs here so that the cargo cover will ride and sit on this. But I also like the fact that they go in. So if you were loading something and you catch one of these, you don't have to worry about breaking this tab off or marring what you're putting in there. So that's kind of nicely thought out that if you hit them from the side, they kind of go into the the side moldings here. Now I will say, obviously you can take this off, disconnect it from the door here. It'll slide out of this little, little track here, but I could not find anywhere to put this. So on, on my Buick Encore, it'll slide right up against the back of the seats, which is a really nice little design, but I couldn't figure out where you would put this. I couldn't figure out putting it underneath here. Um, it just doesn't seem like if you don't need it, there is any place that it's designed to be put in this car. So I thought that's a little bit of a miss. Now I will say, I actually like this steel or maybe aluminum metal strip here. This is something that's been around in a lot of SUVs. It's certainly been in the Jeep Grand Cherokees for as long as I can remember, but it's kind of a thing that gives this protection, especially when you're putting stuff in and out, but it also looks good. It's just one of those little things that you see in here and it's like a nice detail. So you're saying, hey, they put some intention behind here. I also like these side cubbies. Again, it would also probably wasted space if they just filled this out, but you have a little cubby here, a little recessed cubby. That's actually pretty big. So if you have stuff that you wanna be able to access on the regular, sunscreen, bug spray, umbrellas, those types of things. You can put them on the side. It's not gonna take up the big cavernous cargo area here. So I definitely like those. What I will say, it's a little weird, and I think they just did it for manufacturing simplicity, is that you have these little panels on both sides that block this off from the tire compartment and i will show you that because i actually kind of like this so you get a full size spare you get the subwoofer in there but then also around the outside of it you have the styrofoam sorter so you have all the tools are really easy to get to i remember sometimes they would bury these underneath eat the car sometimes you actually have some open compartments right up there so if you have some other important stuff you know a flashlight flares those types of things you can probably put them in there i like the fact that that is all well sorted out there too and now the last thing that i want to show you here in the cargo area is that you have this little bright LED light right up here. So when you open this up at night, this is pretty well lit up. But then on top, on the hatch here, we also have two more lights that shine down. So not only do you have this side light, which is pretty much the only light you'll get in most cars, you actually have these two LED lights up here also shining down. So you actually get pretty good lighting here, especially in dark conditions. And I thought that's a nice little detail as well. All right, so you have seen this car from the outside. Let's see what it's like on the road. All right, so how does she drive? Well, I'll tell you this. In general, I enjoy driving this thing. It's pretty nice. Now, I will say that I have plenty of headroom, but the roof isn't that tall, so the windshield doesn't necessarily feel really tall to me. But despite that, I think it's because I have so much, so much shoulder space here that the car feels open and airy and big. It would probably help if this headliner were a lighter color, but I actually like that it's tied into the rest of the car. Kind of makes me feel cocooned and safe, but it doesn't feel claustrophobic at all. And part of that is because even if I put my elbow here, it's just touching the door. So it's not like it's riding right up close to me, especially if you get in a very, very small car, like a subcompact, you get in a Chevy Spark or something like that. You know, obviously those will make it pretty much everyone feel claustrophobic. But in this case, this car doesn't. Now, I will also say that the roads here aren't great and the ride quality is pretty nice. I think it's those 18 inch wheels on that really tall sidewall nose. So that helps as well. I also want to say that the suspension tuning on this is pretty good. So what I've noticed here is that on a crossover, especially when you take a car and you kind of extend it up. So now you're in a taller seating position. 
and you hit the potholes, you hit the ruts in the road, the car can wobble a little bit. And I've actually said it's kind of like riding a surfboard where your body is kind of compensating because you're looking at the horizon, but the car is kind of wobbling a little bit. This car has as minimal wobbling as I have ever seen in maybe any crossover like this. So I actually like it. It seems like and feels like it stays very flat, even on the turns like that. And when you hit them with a little gas, you know, I don't know if this is magneto suspension or anything like that, but it just feels good. It kind of gets in and behaves and performs like you would expect, which is actually saying a lot because a lot of cars will have some of their little tendencies because of the cheap suspension or the simple suspension or whatever it is. And this one actually gets in, you drive it right out of the gate and it feels and handles exactly like you would want it to. And so I think that is saying a lot. So it's just a nice, easy car to drive and kind of drives and feels like a car. I mean, because effectively it is, but it's got the space of a crossover. So I think from a standpoint of hitting that sweet spot for a lot of people, this will give you a better seating position. It'll give you a lot of interior space. It'll give you some cargo space, and yet it will fit in your garage or be able to be parked on a street, and it's not going to not get through alleys and all those types of things. So I think this is really kind of like, to me, a 43, 44 millimeter watch. It's just kind of that sweet spot to do everything. And so I think a lot of people are gonna like the Q3 and my guess is it probably sells pretty well. Now, I will also say that while this is a quiet ride, probably the noise that you can hear right now is the air conditioning. But if I lower my voice a little bit here, you can still talk, you can still hear things. If I'm in a whisper, um, it sounds a little tinny in here. To be really honest, the active noise canceling that goes on in my Buick Encore, I really come to like because I've noticed that other cars, even luxury cars, nice cars, I don't know if they have it. Maybe they do have some. I actually think that a lot of car companies are pumping in noise as opposed to trying to cancel it out because they want that sportiness. And so things like, you know, the high-end Audis, the BMW M3s, M4s, those types of things are kind of pumping in through the stereo sound as opposed to trying to cancel it. So I don't know that this is doing this and because it's the S-Line, maybe maybe they want to do a little bit of that. I, I haven't had any problems carrying on conversations with people, but it's also not dead quiet. I almost wish, I don't know if you remember back in the day when Saab was a car company, they had a switch on their dashboard. I think it was called like blackout or something. And it would just kill all of the dashboard. It would just go totally black. So I guess it was for hitmen that wanted to sneak up on their targets. But I almost wish there was like a silent mode, a whisper mode on cars where you could just hit this button and it would do that active noise canceling. It would kind of uh, push the air conditioning or the airflow from the vents to the floor or something like that just to kind of give you that whisper quiet mode. So while this is quiet and comfortable to talk in, I will say it's strangely not as quiet as my Buick Encore. So it's not quite Buick quiet. Now one of the things here, and you might be able to see on the road, and if I get up to speed here, if I am doing fairly good speeds, what will happen is the lane departure system will come on. Now you get a little indicator in the instrument cluster down at the bottom and it is probably the least obtrusive lane departure warning I have ever used. And so from that standpoint, I call it tolerable. And the reason I call it tolerable is because when you start hitting the line, the steering wheel will kind of nudge you. It'll actually feel like you are just kind of hitting a rut in the road and it's kind of like pulling you back. And that's how pretty much all lane departure works. But I've noticed, and I think it was in the Honda Odyssey that I drove, you also got an audible warning when you were crossing over onto one of those lines. And so that's kind of annoying because I don't really want that. I don't want to beep, beep, beep when I'm getting to the line because yeah, I get it. And I don't want to be driving all the time and be told that every five minutes, which is totally possible that can happen because sometimes I encroach on them. Sometimes the road gets pretty narrow. And so the audible warning is annoying. I like the fact that this does not give you that audible warning. Now I will also say here that if you hit the line enough, it does give you an audible warning and a warning on the dash that says, you know, stay within your lane or whatever it is. So at some point it gets fed up with you and gives you the audible and visual warning. So that's why I call it tolerable. For the most part, it's kind of nice to have it on, but in most other cars where I've had it, and especially when it beeps at you when I'm hitting one of the lines, I will just turn it off because I don't want to deal with that at all. So this car makes it tolerable. It doesn't make me want to turn it off. Now, 
the thing that is kind of intolerable, and it's not just this Audi, this is probably one of the better ones at it, is the auto start stop function. I do not know how much gas auto start stop actually saves anyone. And if you live in the city and you are mostly stopped at lights, maybe, but there's a couple things here. One, they do give you a defeat button right on the center console here. So it's always on by default. I haven't figured out a way to turn it off by default, but I will find myself getting up to a light like we're pulling up to here it engaging and then giving me that rough feeling when it's starting back up and after that first time I'll usually turn it off so we'll see if it does it and what I will notice is that the tack will drop into this ready position so it's done it now if I hit the gas I will say that's decently smooth but what you get is just a little bit of this juddering or jittering juddering right at the time when you are punching the throttle so what it feels like to me in most cars is like you're on a gravel road or dirt road and you've punched the gas and the tires spin out just a little bit but on dirt so you get like you know it's not totally uncomfortable it's not like deep ruts in the road now some cars like the bmws are the ones that i think are the worst in it you know those feel like and then the car kind of surges this one it's pretty minimal if you don't notice it if you're kind of an oblivious driver you can probably drive it without it ever feeling like you're doing it but what i've noticed is that you still get a little bit of that especially on a slow takeoff if you really gun the throttle at a light it kind of masks it a little bit more but on the slower takeaways you'll kind of feel those this is like that you know it's almost like one of the tires is slipping on ice or something you know it's just it's not a comfortable feeling i don't like it I, again i'm skeptical about how much gas it'll actually save the other thing that i've noticed in this and maybe this is the same in all of them but it doesn't stay off for very long so i can be at a street light and that light may be red for three minutes but what i've noticed is that it might go off for a minute and then come back on automatically so after a certain period of time it's saying hey the load by the air conditioner or whatever or the electronics or the radio or whatever need to be supplemented with the engine and it'll start it back up on its own so i don't know why at the most maybe you'll get 60 seconds of shutoff to be honest and this is just my opinion i'm sure someone's thought of this but i don't know why they just don't do cylinder deactivation at a stoplight as opposed to deactivating the entire engine so on a four cylinder turbo engine maybe you can just have two cylinders continuing to move the engine so that you have the momentum still going but then you you fire up those spark plugs and those injectors on the other two cylinders you know cylinder deactivation has been around for a long time on v8s at highway cruising speeds to only use half the engine so i feel like that would be a better compromise so you don't have this starter starting up the motor kind of giving you that little like jumpiness at the beginning so i really don't like auto start stop i'm glad they put the defeat button down there every car should have it but i'll be honest i think most car companies should just remove it so full dead stop and it's back down to this ready mode and I'm kind of curious to see how long it will stay in that ready mode. Maybe I'll just let this camera run because we'll find out when it fires up on its own or if the light will turn green first. It's a race and it's very suspenseful. <gasps> uh oh, the left turn lane's got their green light, so we're going to be going pretty soon. Can the Audi outweigh it? Can it outweigh it? Yellow, I think we're going to get that green light and we got the green light and i got the little jitter from the engine start stop all right so i don't know how long it will stay in that ready state but it's not indefinite and it was long enough to outlast that light there all right so overall what i think of this man it drives just about like you'd expect it's decently quiet inside it's a comfortable place to be the cabin looks fresh although i don't know that it looks great to me you know and i think it's just the right size but i tell you what for me if money were no object the fact that it has these unbelievably nice headrests these totally adjustable ones that will fit pretty much anyone's posture i think is a huge thing if you're going to get in a car and want to drive it then you want it to be comfortable to you so i don't know i really like it I think the Audi is kind of more of my style. It's a little bit of a more youthful brand, I think, than the Mercedes have tended to be. Maybe BMW tends to be in there too, but BMW has tended to get a little reputation, kind of a little bit more snobbier reputation. So I think Audi is kind of like a step up from the VW. It's kind of like young professional. It's kind of like the tag hoyer of watches to me. It doesn't necessarily scream like super high end, super expensive. It flies below the radar a little bit. And I think this Q3 is a great car for a lot of peeps. 
So if you have a Q3 and want to pick up some awesome Q3 accessories, I'll put a link to some of my favorites in the description below. Peter Von Vanda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper. We can live better than ever things to Peter. Peter Von Vanda.